don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can see, today I'm in the kitchen, so you'll have to excuse if there's a little bit of an echo. So the reason I'm in the kitchen today is because after Tuesday's Steampunk Tuesday project where I did the storage box using the resin casts and the rust paint, there have been quite a few comments and a few emails asking how I do my casts and what products I use. So I thought I'd show you today exactly what I use and how I do it. So I thought I'd just give you a quick overview of some of the silicone moulds that Ian and I have collected over the years. So as you can see, there's some for Halloween, there's obviously steampunky ones, there's a beautiful um, Art Nouveau one from Finnebar and Prima. Um, there are some that have been made just using, oh, that was actually done using a Yorkshire pudding tin, because you can tell by the shape. So that was purchased from a craft supplier here in the UK. Some of these have been bought from eBay, so obviously from China, um, like this one, this one, this one, and obviously that one as well, which was originally designed for cake making. So it's a cake making decorating mold, if you know what I mean. So it meant for embellishments for putting on the outsides of cakes. Uh, and these were recently sent to us um, in Happy Mail. Um, so uh, these are um, Prima again these four darker ones, so they're Prima. Um, these ones are Finnebar for Prima, and these ones are just ones that were, I think these were food ones, so these ones were for cake decorations or cupcake toppers. So that's just a small selection of the silicon moulds that Ian and I have collected. Now, like I said, um, if you're creating moulds or pieces for non-food things, so if you're not going to eat them or put them in your mouth, then you can use any of the ones that were made specifically for, for cake decorating, because although they're food safe, obviously that's great for food, but if you're not going to eat them, then you can use anyone for doing what you need to do with your resin or your paper clay, your sculpey or whatever it is, is your medium of choice. Okay, so excuse the shakiness of the camera, if there is any, because I'm holding it in my hand. So this is the polyurethane casting resin that we like to use. So this is not clear. When it dries and when it sets, it goes a whitish colour, like white chocolate in some cases. And now this is made by a company here in the UK called Resin Colour. They're based in... Wales and there's their address just there so I can't pronounce that and that's their website there. It's fairly inexpensive as far as resin goes so this set that I've got here the part A and the part B so one's the resin and one is a hardener so the, uh, the part B is the hardening solution and the part A that come in different sizes obviously you can get larger bottles than this um, I can't remember what this was, this size. Um, I think it's 500 grams um, in total, or 300 grams. I think it's 500, because 300 would be half a pint. And that's definitely not half a pint. But anyway, it comes in different sizes. This particular size, um, I paid, I think it was like 13 pounds for, um, and is a one-to-one. -one by volume or by weight, doesn't really make any difference. Um, so if you put, let's say, 20 grams of part A, you need 20 grams of the part B for it to harden correctly. It's a real straightforward process. Like I said, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so there's no fiddling around with maths, which ain't nobody got time for. So just a straightforward one-to-one -one by volume or weight, and you're good to go. So I'll just say a little quick um, thing about the difference between polyurethane resin and the normal kind of clear epoxy resin that you would use for jewellery making. This is like liquid plastic. The other one is slightly different. Like I said, this goes white 
when it hardens, whereas the other goes clear or stays clear, like the diamond resin or uh, ones you'd use for creating cabochons or jewellery grade stuff, or for doing um, like filling in tables and that kind of thing, as we've all seen you know, on YouTube and that kind of thing. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? I was going to say something, but I can't remember. Oh yes, that was it, the time that it takes to cure. The clear stuff normally takes between 24 and 48 hours for it to set and harden completely. This stuff, the polyurethane, which dries white, is demoldable in 30 minutes, which is a huge difference from having to wait one to two days before it fully hardens. And this is fully hard in like 30 minutes. So the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is just a straightforward cast with no colour. So I'm not going to add any colours whatsoever to the polyurethane resin. I'll just do a straight mix and a straight pour and then you'll be able to see what it looks like when it's all dry without adding any colour first. So the first thing you're going to need is a set of kitchen scales, a mixing pot. This is just a plastic container um, with measurements up the sides that we also got from the same manufacturer. So we got them as a, a kind of job lot. Um, and also some something to stir and mix the part A and the part B together with. So I've got some disposable, um, what we call lolly sticks or stirrers, uh, popsicle sticks, um, which can be found in nearly every single craft shop in the world. So <laughs> that's those, you get them in huge bags um, for next to nothing. So that's what we use for mixing the resin together. So what I'll do now, oh, you also need to zero your scales. So make sure your mixing pot is on first, turn on, and then wait till it goes to zero, because then it takes into account the weight of the actual pot itself. Important to remember. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to cast a couple of these flowers. So they're only small, so they're not going to need a huge amount of resin. And bearing in mind, if you're doing, say, 10 or 20 grams of part A, you're also going to be doing 10 or 20 grams of part B. So whatever the volume is, you need to make sure that you take into account that it will be doubled up because you'll be putting 10 or 20 on top of 10 or 20. So you will have twice the volume once you actually start pouring. So don't forget that. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the part A. So I'm going to put in, just to start off with, I'm gonna put 20 grams of the part A into the mixing. All right, so I've just gone slightly over there. I've put, it's actually reading 23. So when I add the part B, I need to make sure, I've gone down to 22 now. So when I add the part B, I need to make sure that the reading hat is double that. So it currently says 22. So I need it to say 44 to make sure I've got the exact amount in. So I'm going quite slowly. I've got a little bit of time to pour it in because I've not mixed it yet. There we go, bang on 44. Okay. So now, once we start mixing, we've got around 20 to 30 seconds before we need to start pouring. So we need to start mixing up the liquid and stir it for at least 20 to 30 seconds. Okay. I think that's just about, just about right. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay that over the top of there and then bring in one of the molds. There you go, just position the carrot a little bit. And what I like to do is just kink the edge of that pouring dish just to make a, a kind of jug spout and then just pour the liquid in until you reach the top of your mold. And that's what it looks like. So it's all clear 
and just looks a little bit yellowish. There we go, just to the top. And that should cure within 30 minutes. So there's a few little bubbles just on the bottom. That's okay, you can just either maneuver them out. There you go, just over the side. Don't worry too much if it starts to spill over. It ain't a problem. Okay, so if you look at this one, you'll see that the center has started to go milky. It's no longer, you can't see right down to the bottom. In this one, in that center there, it started to go milky and you can't see right the way down to the bottom any longer. So that's started to cure. Now, when the process happens, it's a chemical reaction, there is a release of heat. So you can kind of feel just a little bit of heat coming off those moulds. Nothing to be alarmed about. Okay, so as you can see now, they're getting even more milky and you can actually see the difference in colour to the centre to the outside. Now one of the things I didn't mention obviously was the fact that when you're doing this you need to make sure that your moulds are on a flat surface. If they're not it's going to spill over like it did with me. I forgot that I was on a glass mat and <laughs> there is a little bit of flexibility with it so there is a little bit of spillage coming over that. Don't worry about little spillages like that because what you can do once you've demolded is they will either just snip off or you can just cut them off with a craft knife. It's not a huge big thing. So still got a little time left. So I'll be back again in a little while. So while those flowers are curing, because remember it's going to take about 30 minutes before they're demoldable. By that I mean you can turn them out of the mould. So while they're doing that, while they're busy setting quite nicely, I thought I'd move on to the next stage and show you how to colour the resin up. Now it's exactly the same process as previous, apart from you add your mica powder into the resin when you're mixing the part A and the part B. So let's do that. Okay, so once again, I've zeroed my mixing pot. This is a different one than before because obviously the other one has still got remnants of resin in it. So this is a brand new one. So I've now got my moulds that I'm going to do. Those are the two flowers setting quite nicely. So we're going to pour and create some skulls using this next lot. So again, I'm going to mix equal amounts of part A and part B, and then I'll show you how to add your pigment. Okay, so for this one, I've added 15 grams of part A. So I'll now add a further 15 grams of part B making it up to 30. Okay so I've added my part B we've now got 30. I haven't mixed it yet so now we need to add our mica pigment into the mixture. So you'll have to excuse me because I am doing all this one-handed while whilst holding the camera. So the pigment I'm using is a blue grey mica pigment and all I'm going to do is just using a little spoon I'm going to take a little bit out of the bag and then I'm going to add it into the mixture. we go and then take your measuring stick or your stirring stick and then once again stir nicely for approximately 30 seconds okay so that's been about 30 seconds let me just move that out of the way and then to bring the camera into those skulls. Let's just hope the camera's not going to tip over. Now, one of the things to remember when adding mica is that you're changing the consistency of the material by adding the powder. So it becomes thicker and sometimes pours a little different when you add the colour. And also one of the things to remember when you're using the polyurethane is because it's white 
when you're adding um, any colour to it, when it sets and dries, it will also be affected by the white pigment, or sorry, by the white colour of the polyurethane, and will also just dye it down a little bit. So if you're adding like green, it will become a pastel colour because you're adding it to white. Okay, so let me just pick the camera up. Excuse for the wobble. And there you go. So that's now in the mould and again will take 30 seconds. Now, one of the other things you've got to remember as well is that the inside of the mould may be textured so you won't get a smooth glass-like shiny finish like you will do on the back. Because the backs are open to the air and not touching anything, they will dry like ice. So they will dry smooth and shiny. Whereas the resin will take on the texture of the silicone rubber inside the mould. So probably won't be, well I know they won't be, as shiny and as smooth as the backs. Okay, so we've now got the two flowers in just the plain white polyurethane resin and we've now got the four skulls using that grey or blue-grey mica powder which I mixed in with the resin as well. So again, they're going to take 30 minutes, just looking at the clock, until they're ready to be taken out of the mould. Now it's already been 15 minutes for the flowers so we still have to wait another 15 minutes before we can take those out. So I think it's time to have a cup of coffee and then I'll join with you when we're ready to take the flowers out of the mould. Okay, so we've got about five minutes or so before these are fully ready, but as you can hear, they're already hard. Those have still got um, another 20 minutes to go, so I'm not even going to attempt to tap those, but they're almost ready. So we've got a little bit of time left, so what I thought I would do is just show you the third method for adding colour, which is to dust your mould with your mica powder. So I just need to position the camera and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm hoping you can see the mould pretty good there, or pretty well. So is on the side okay there's my hands and my fingers so I should be able to tilt and show you exactly how this is working so what I've got is I've got the bag I'm going to use a bronze color this time and I've got a soft paint brush all I'm going to do is just open the bag up push the brush down into the bag pick up some of the mica powder onto the brush and then I'm going to dust into the mould. Which creates a real nice thin layer of that colour. You may just need to add a little bit more just to be certain. I will bring the camera around so you can see it a bit better. You see, this isn't necessarily the best one to do if you're wanting um, an overall look. But if it's just surface, then it's fine. Okay, so that's that mould done. And I'll do the opposite pair or the opposite of the pair. Of course, bearing in mind after you've done this, most of the mica will come off and it will be attached to the resin. If you've got any on the sides, don't worry about it because it will just wash off in cold water. Just run it under a cold water tap and give it a little bit of a, a rub with your fingers. Okay, so I'll put that away. 
So once again, we're going to do equal parts, part A, part B. I'll just tip it just to show you. So I'm not too worried about the fact that there's more of the makeup powder left in the mold. That's not an issue altogether. So I'm going to do equal parts, part A and part B. So we'll do, let's just say, I'll do 15 part A. There we go. And 15 part B. I'm not showing you this bit because you've already seen it twice. <laughs> now I went a little bit over there, so I'm just going to add just a tad more of the part A, just to compensate. There we go. And then I'm just going to mix. I'm just move those out of the way. I'm just going to mix that for the 30 seconds, as we've discussed. Okay, so that's near enough 30 seconds. And then I'm just going to pour the resin straight in over the top. And remember, this will go white, so you won't be able to see through it. There, I think that's going to be enough. Okay, so that's the resin. So when that goes completely white on top, we'll know that that's done and ready to go. So there was a little bit left, so with the remnants and the leftovers, I have just been pouring them into other moulds over here, so the Finnevair Art Nouveau one and also that Moon one, which has now been in for well over half an hour. Okay, so it's only been about five minutes and you can see the surface of that angel's wing there just starting to turn milky. So I think what we'll do is we'll wait until all of the moulds or all of the casts are solid and set and then we'll demold everything together there you go look it's as quick as that okay so it's now been well in excess of half an hour since we did the angel's wings um, i've brought everything back upstairs again and um, mainly because i need both hands to do this um, and ian's popped in as well because he loves the demold i love process. the demold it's the most exciting part yes so these were the first two flowers that we did okay. using the polyurethane so that's just natural color that's just natural color with no pigments whatsoever so we'll turn those out and it's that initial kind of oh i love that pull away of that. the mold that you get with these this one's slightly overhung ah so um, these were from um, Frankie Clark, remember, oh, yeah. back in the day. Yes. So I'll pop that out, and there's the flower. Well, that's cast well. I'm hoping that it's not oh, it's too the, bright. No, it's not. The screen looks all right. Yeah. That's so that's that first flower. I feel. It's very, oh, they're almost waxy looking, aren't they? Yes, they are. Like white chocolate, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so mm. what I want to show you is when these set and they go hard they do tend to contract a little bit so you always get a little bit of a lip around the outside that's nothing that either an emery board or a little piece of sandpaper won't solve you can just rub it on sandpaper just to smooth that off but if you're gluing these onto something Doesn't that's matter. actually quite handy because it creates that cavity for you to stick your it glue does. when you're pushing it down it does that's a good idea so that's the first flower mm -hmm. So the second flower, again, just, you love that bit. I'm going to let you do one of these in a second. Thank you. <laughs> so that's the second flower all the way around, and then just peel that out and look at that. Oh, so that's sort of a carnation, is that like a carnation? Yeah, I and mean, just look at the detail that you get using the cast resin. It's all the petals all stuck up at the beautiful, and again, there's a little bit of shrinkage, not but a not a huge one, amount. So those were the resin, just yeah. the polyurethane resin, with no colour whatsoever. Now, before we go into the mica, I just yeah. want to bring up the subject of alcoholing. Yes. Okay. So you can mix alcoholing with the polyurethane resin, but you've got to remember that because it's white, when it 
hardens that whatever colour you add in will go paler. Oh, it's pastel isn't it? It will go pastel so you need to add quite a bit of alcohol ink, mm -hmm. but it may extend the drying time. Right, great. So it's a case of just... Having a go. You know, I'm playing, yeah. I'm playing. Okay, would you like to pull the sides of oh, those please. skulls? I know, they're nice and shiny oh. out there. It's a shame that they're not like that on the inside. <laughs> because we've got the texture of the rubber, Warm. the silicone rubber, pop it in my hand. There you go. And then it. it takes on um, it takes on the texture of the silicone inside the mold. So that's the back, a bit shinier than the front. Just so kissing the dog, sorry. Oh, it's Mr. Bentley. Just Hello, sweetie pie. And I'll well. do the I'll do these two. Okay, so they're the same sort of thing. Well, yeah, I just did four. Yeah. Mainly because I had two moulds the same. Yeah. Aren't they cool? Absolutely cool. Right, I'm just going to pull this one in as well. What's that one? Right, okay. When I poured those two roses, yeah. I made too much of the liquid. Ah. So I just poured it into one of the other moulds that I had. Is it? So this is the... I've already pulled it from the side, sorry. Uh, so this is the Sun and Moon one. I love that one. I think painted up that, beautiful. Yeah, painted black and then gone over with um, metallic wax or yeah. dry brushed with gold. It's absolutely beautiful. And I will use this in a project. I love the detail. Yeah, fairly soon. Again, this is one that's got a lot of texture on the front. Yeah. Actually in with the silicone. But you can see how shiny it is. I'm trying to catch the light. Yeah. It's not letting me do it. You can just get it there, look. It's, it's almost like glass. Lovely. It is, it's lovely. So there's that one. And there was also, you know, we had a little bit of spare left over when we did the wings. Oh, well, she's so pretty, isn't she? That again. There you go. You can see the details. The detail. It is. Her eyes. Yeah, I mean. It's lovely. Absolutely. This is the thinner bow one. So we tend to, when we cast in, we cast quite a lot, don't we? Yeah. Whatever there's left over, we always put into other Something else, because happy accidents. You do. So these were with the, the leftovers of the blue-grey. Again, from that same mould look. And I did just a few of the flowers. Some little fleurs. Just because. If you've got it left, there's no point well, throwing it away. Exactly. Which is why we have a tub full of bits. bits that we've already done. So um, I had some comments about why did I do them with copper yeah. when I did the storage unit for yes. the, the pipes. Um, well I cast those didn't I? Yeah, he, he did them a while ago. Um, so you know you just use what you've got, you don't cast specifically sometimes, you just do we'll have a look and see what you've got. And I'm excited about this one. Okay, I've never dusted them before. Neither have I. Karen so, does. Yeah, our friend Karen does this all of the time. So do you want to demold these? No, 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 no. you do. Okay, so these have had quite a while now. So as you can see, you just very gently just pull away from the edge. So this was the dusting. If I yelp. Oh. Oh. Wow. Ooh. That's actually better. It is. May I have a look at one? Closer up. Yeah, I'll give you that one. Thank you. And then I'll demold this just one. Just the edges that you need to dust more. Well, this was this was it. I went just went around the edges of one of them, oh and then that's beautiful. And that's the other one. So you don't necessarily need to use a lot of mica no. in the process. That's a much better idea, actually. So you can see around the edges. I mean, you could paint the edges. You could, but look at that. They're lovely. I can feel that. I can feel the machine coming in. <laughs> so there you go. That is how to cast using the polyurethane resin. As I've explained, the clearer ones normally take a lot longer to cure, 24 hours to 48 hours. Yeah. Um, you used some resin recently and it was still pliable. Yeah. Um, like a week after, or yeah. four or five days after. Four or five days after, yeah. So let me just pop these to one side and bring in some of the casts that we did. Ian and I tend to, when we get a new mould... We get or, giddy. Or, <laughs> yeah, or we get a new batch of um, the resin in, we tend to have a casting session. Um, when we got the last lot, these were the... Um, these were a gift. The, these came in Happy Mail, I can't remember the lady's name. That's awful, isn't it? Cynthia Should've... Dossett. Was it Cynthia Dossett? Cynthia, yeah. and that rings a bell. So when Cynthia sent this, we had a bit of a, a play session, didn't we, using Ooh, different yeah. colours. That's the same grey, blue-grey. 
coppers and skulls. And that's the silver. So you can see there is it's nearly the same, isn't it? Well, it's obviously a lot bluer. Yes. You know, but that's you know. Well, everybody that. liked the butterfly. Mum thought that was brilliant, didn't yeah, she? Yeah. Sorry. Let me just bring those two skulls in. That's the silver grey. That's the blue grey. There's a definite difference in the colour. Oh, there is. Yeah. The one on the left is definitely bluer than the it one is. on the right. Yeah. So that's the silver grey. That's the blue grey. This was done in the blue grey. So yes, that's the dragonfly from the um, Prima set. That's this one here. So we had to play with that. Um, we weren't quite so successful with the legs, were we? So I cut them off. Um, they are very, very thin. So you need um, your resin to be very, very thin and runny for it to go into those holes because they are very, very fine. Once you've added mica, remember what I said earlier, it thickens up yeah. the resin. So you don't necessarily, you won't necessarily get it into that. But the butterfly. Yeah, mum went into raptures over this, didn't she? So that's the butterfly from the same set. So that's again the prima. Does the butterfly set. have tentacles? No, that was it. There's, there's no oh, antenna. No. Oh, good. None whatsoever. Oh, did well. So like that. that just fits in the mould, exact amount like that. Ah, yes. So there's no antenna or anything. That looks like galaxy chocolate. It does look like a chocolate bar, doesn't it? That's just the way that the the mica forms on the back. It's almost like a, an agate thing, yeah. isn't it? But, but because but because the um, the the silicon rubber is textured, you get that texture in the resin and look as at well. The detail in the cogs a little cuts. I know. Little... It's absolutely fantastic. Now let me just bring that one in with that one that I dusted. Yeah, you've got a lot more metallic. Haven't you? There's a lot more shine on the yes, dusting there in there. So yeah. therein lies a tail, I think. Mm. And because you're pouring the resin on top of the mica. It is absorbed. It draws it in. Uh, and it doesn't come off in your fingers, Your Honour. Uh -huh. It doesn't come off in your hand. So there's a big difference, isn't there? Yeah. So it really depends on the effect. If you're casting for painting, so if you want to add these to a mixed media piece, cover with gesso and then dry brush with wax yeah. or with metallic paint, it doesn't really make any difference, does it? This was one of the clocks once again. That's just using the polyurethane without a colour, and that's the one done using that copper bronze. But it's much cheaper just to dust the mould. Well, it is. Because you'd, you'd put a teaspoonful in. Not even a teaspoonful. No, I mean, for, if you were oh, doing it like that. If you were casting, you'd teaspoon. use... Yeah, I used half a teaspoon to do um, the skulls. Yeah. Just half but a teaspoon for when those. when you dust it, it's tiny, tiny it amounts. Is. You, you saw how much or how little I used to just those um, angel wings. So, and these are some that I did a while ago. Like I said, we always have some on stock because there you go. You never know when you're gonna need them. That's it, exactly. So we've got a tub that we put all our casts in for use at a later date. So I hope that you've enjoyed watching me play with that polyurethane resin, which is the white one not the clear one, because obviously we prefer that because of the cure time. Yeah. 30 minutes, done and job done. Yeah. Yeah. You've got your course on within half an hour. Yeah. Yeah, ready to go home. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and of course, with us doing lots of mixed media work, it's perfect, because mm. you can just paint it whatever colour you want. So but those flowers are beautiful, aren't they? Well, I did, I put some of the wings onto that put photo frame I did with my mum. That's right, you did. I remember now. There you go, fantastic. Brilliant. So I hope you enjoyed watching me play with that. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, <gasps> you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from us. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye. Bye. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.